first of all, we'll talk about the solar radiation. So the photons the sun is uh, producing and uh, which hits the Earth. So let's make it quick sketch. So we have the sun on the left hand side and then far away Earth. So the distance 115 million kilometers. Um, and then we have the radiation coming from the sun. So where does the radiation come from? Uh, it's the fusion of hydrogen atoms. So the hydrogen fusion, it's a three step process. So first uh, two protons or hydrogen atoms uh, are taken. So it's a hydrogen one, which are fused to a, a deuterium. So we have a proton and a neutron. So this is a deuterium. Um, and then what we also need is a next hydrogen atom in the second step, which are forming uh, helium three atoms. So we have two protons and one neutron and having a second chain. Again, hydrogen deuterium with this uh, filled circle is a neutron. Uh, we get and uh, an additional hydrogen atom gives us helium three. So two protons, one neutron, and these two helium three uh, atoms are fused to a helium four. So we have two of these protons to neutrons and of course what is released is a proton and here again a proton is uh, is released of course what's what's also occurring are some some positrons uh, neutrinos um, in this case uh, the first step uh, which are neglected in this point the main issue is that in this process uh, radiation so light and heat is generated uh, is emitted um, in the uh, core of the sun, and that's the radiation we can use, we, we get on Earth's surface, and uh, we can use this, uh, of course, for growing plants and to use it in a solar cell to generate electricity. Next, we'll have a look at the spatial distribution of the solar radiation reaching Earth. So, we will have a look at the map of the global horizontal irradiation provided by the World Bank Group. What you can see on this map is uh, the distribution of the solar energy on Earth. Of course, you see here in this regions close to the equator, these red and uh, orange colors are representing a high annual energy from the sun with volume you see here at the bottom. 2000 up to 2500 kilowatt hours per square meter surface area uh, on a horizontal plane. Of course, uh, in other regions on Earth, like in Australia, for example, Odor, or here in uh, Chile, Mexico, also high radiation values. On the other hand, in, in other regions on Earth, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, like in Germany, France, or Central Europe, you see this uh, light yellow, uh, light green colors representing um, an annual solar energy of just 1000 to 1100 kilowatts per square meter. So just one half of the solar energy we can observe, we, we can collect uh, close to the equator. Um, and what we can do is um, just to estimate what is the space we need uh, to fulfill the annual global energy consumption. So if you just have 
a look at the energy consumption on Earth. Consumption in one year, it's about 113 petawatt hours. So that's the total energy consumption, including electricity, heat demand, and the energy demand of the transportation sector. It's 113 petawatt hours, or in a different units, 130 times 10 to the 12th kilowatt hours to use a different unit. Um, so let's take a look at a region with a high irradiance. So let's let's go to uh, the, the Sahara region. So somewhere here, uh, and let's pick a region with an annual um, solar energy of let's say uh, 2,260 kilo hours per square meter, so something like like this. So this uh, is also 2.26 times 10 to the third kilowatt hours per square meter. And now we can derive uh, the area. Um, so the area we need uh, on Earth to get this or to, to use the solar power uh, to fulfill the annual energy demand is just 113 times 10 to the 12th kilowatt hours over 2.26 times 10 to the third kilowatt hours per square meter. So the unit, of course, is a square meter. And if you check this, this is 50 times 10 to the ninth square meters, or in a more appropriate um, unit, this is 50 times 10 to the third square kilometers or um, 5 million hectares. So you see, we, we just need 50,000 uh, square kilometers of uh, space uh, to fulfill the energy demand. So the solar energy, there's a large amount of solar energy we get on Earth. And if we just try to uh, to, to display the, the size, it's just uh, uh, more or less this space. So you see this small rectangle represents the uh, space we need to use on Earth to collect solar energy to fulfill the demand, of course, now we have to keep in mind efficiency losses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but you, you get an idea that the space we need or the, the area we need is very small uh, to fulfill the global energy demand, and that's that, that shows the high potential uh, of the uh, photovoltaic sector uh, to fulfill the energy demand of Earth. 